स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया In the last lecture, we saw what is meant by uh, removable singularity of a function f. We observed that uh, remo an isolated singularity is a removable singularity if and only if it is locally bounded. We also noted that if, uh, uh, if an isolated singularity z0 is a removable singularity, then the limit as z going to z0 of f of z should exist. By considering the behavior of f as that goes to the singularity. Let us now study the other types of uh, singularities that can that can occur. The first one that we will be discussing is what is meant what is what is called as a pole of uh, f at a given singularity z0. So, let us start with z0 a point which is an isolated singularity. Recall that uh, z0 is an isolated singularity of a function f if f is holomorphic in a punctured neighborhood d z0 r minus z0 we do not know about its behavior at z0. We say that z0 is a pole of f we say that f has a pole at z0. If the limit as z goes to z0 of the absolute value of f of f of z, this limit if you consider this blows up, this is equal to infinite. Rewriting this i e given any m positive, given some m positive, there exists an epsilon positive such that the absolute value of f of z is greater than m for all z in d z0 epsilon minus the point z0. If this happens, we say that the absolute value diverges to infinity. And if this happens, if the absolute value of f of z uh, blows up as we approach the singularity, then we say that f has a pole at z0. Let us go back to the examples uh, we did have in the last lecture and revisit them. If you look at the example which was f of z given by cos of z by z, remember that 0 was an isolated singularity and we also noticed that the also the limit as z goes to 0 of absolute value of cos of z by z this blows up and that is precisely how we had eliminated this as a removable singularity. This was not a removable singularity because this limit should have existed that is how we had uh, checked that this is not a removable singularity. But this is exactly the situation which uh, tells us that the function f has a pole at 0 f has a pole at z is equal to 0, z 0 equal to 0. How about the other example? If you recall, so this is the other example which was basically e to the power 1 by 1 minus z. Recall that f of z equal to e to the power 1 by 1 minus z did not satisfy the conditions for uh, z, e z 0 equal to 1 being a pole. So, let me just write that does not have a pole at z 0 equal to 1. This was because we took a sequence z n and z n prime in the last lecture and we saw that the limit as z goes to uh, z n if you look at the limit of uh, f of z n as n goes to infinity that was 1 which was not blowing up. In fact, the limit of z n prime as n goes to infinity of uh, limit of f of z n prime as n goes to infinity was in fact i which is again not in it is not blowing up. So, this is certainly not a pole of course, it is not a, a removable singularity either, 
so these are these are examples of uh, isolated singularities which are neither removable singularities nor poles such singularities are categorized as what is called as essential singularities let me just write that down essential singularities so these are precisely those singularities which are neither removable nor poles so let z0 be an isolated singularity of f then z0 is called an essential singularity of f if it is neither a removable singularity nor a pole of f so any singularity which any isolated singularity which cannot be categorized as removable singularity or a pole is just called as an essential singularity let us now spend some time studying how the poles of uh, a function f behave how the, the uh, isolated singularity called pole uh, can be studied better so let's revisit our definition so let f let z0 be a pole of f so that means that uh, i e limit as z goes to z naught of the absolute value of f of z this is infinite in particular there exists an r positive such that on d z0 r minus the point z naught if you look at that punctured disc there exists an r such that f of z absolute value will not be 0 and hence f of z is not equal to 0. This can certainly be arranged because uh, the limit is after all blowing up right the, by very definition we can arrange for this. So, in particular in particular if you define a function g of z defined to be 1 by f of z on d z0 r minus z0 this is a holomorphic function is holomorphic on d z0 r minus z0 but then by the very definition z0 turns out to be a uh, turns out to be an isolated singularity of g then z0 is an isolated singularity of g moreover we can arrange for our capital r to be such that mod of f of z is greater than m so let r positive be such that absolute value of f of z is greater than m on d z0 r minus z naught remember that the absolute value of f of z blows up as we go to z naught so this is the exact definition right so this means that absolute value of g of z which is equal to the absolute value of 1 by f of z that is less than 1 by n on d z0 r minus z0 that means that uh, it is a bounded function here it is locally bounded or rather in fact it is bounded on d z0 r minus z0 by Riemann removable singularity theorem g e uh, z0 is a removable singularity of g and it is going to be a simple exercise for you to sit down and check that as we approach z0 g of z approaches 0. So, 
it's an exercise to sit down and check. You have to use the fact that uh, z0 is a pole of f to conclude that limit as z goes to z0 of g of z is equal to 0. So, hence what do we have? g um, maybe I should just change it to something else h of z defined to be equal to g of z on d z0 r minus z0 and 0 on for z is equal to z0. If you consider this function h then h is a holomorphic function. Also since h is not identically equal to 0 that is because g is not identically equal to 0. Since h is not identically equal to 0 by the principle of analytic continuation there exists some m such that the mth derivative is not equal to 0. Certainly the uh, function h vanishes at z0 that let m be the first uh, positive integer m plus 1 be the first positive integer such that uh, h m does not vanish. So, by factorization theorem let me just write that by factorization theorem and the principle of analytic continuation this we have done many times this particular uh, technique that we are going to implement principle of analytic continuation both tell us that h of z is equal to z minus z0 to the power m times h1 of z where h1 of z0 does not vanish. So, we can certainly write our function h of z in this manner for m greater than or equal to 1. Certainly, it will be greater than or equal to 1 because we know that h of z0 is equal to 0. So, this is certainly assured. We say we okay, so let me just uh, write down what the implications of this are. What was h of z by the way? h of z is hence on d z0 r minus z0 h of z is just g of z right. We have g of z is equal to z minus z0 times h1 of z. But what was g of z? g of z was nothing but 1 by f of z on dz0 r minus z0 is not it. And therefore, uh, by reducing our radius r further down, we may assume let me just let it let us just assume that uh, h1 does not vanish in dz0 r. We can always do that because h1 of z0 is not equal to 0 and by continuity it does not vanish in a small enough neighborhood. We may, we may assume that r is exactly that neighborhood. So, we may assume if you do not want uh, to have any confusion whatsoever you can get go down to an r1 less than r if needed less than or equal to r such that h1 of z is not equal to 0 on dz0 r1. Let me not uh, unnecessarily incorporate more notations. Let me just write that h1 of z is not equal to 0 on dz0 r. Remember that uh, h1 is defined on uh, dz0 r. Right, because h is defined everywhere on dz0 r and therefore, we can always assume that h1 does not vanish on dz0 r. That is good because then we can write f of z to be equal to uh, 1 by uh, maybe let me give 1 by h1 some name we already took g. So, let h0 uh, of z be equal to 1 by h1 of z which is now a holomorphic function which is holomorphic on dz0 r because we are inverting a function which does not have a 0 at all. And we can now write f of z to be equal to h0 of z by I missed an m here. So, this is going to be z minus z0 to the power m below on dz0 r minus z0 only places where we can talk about 
1 by z minus z0 to the power m which is away from z0. So here we will be able to write something like this. But then h0 is a holomorphic function on dz0r in particular it is complex analytic since h0 is complex analytic as you can see I am freely using all the results that we have proved in the last uh, few weeks because it is complex analytic we have h0 of z is equal to summation a m maybe I should write it a little more carefully let me write it as a m plus a m minus 1 z minus z 0 plus a m minus 1 z minus z 0 to the power m minus 1 plus summation a m z minus z 0 to the power m or maybe a n z minus z 0 to the power n n greater than or equal to m. So, you can certainly just uh, manipulating the uh, indices to suit what we want to write in the end. This is just the usual power series expansion that I have written down. Z0 can be written in this manner in as a power series expansion around Z0 in DZ0R where it is holomorphic. And therefore, what was our f? f was h0 of z by z minus z0 to the power m. So, hence on d z0 r. So, notice that uh, here, so notice here where a m does not vanish, this is because h0 of z0 is not equal to 0. And because of that we can write on dz0r minus z0, we will be able to write our function f of z. What was our f of z? f of z was h0z by z minus z0 to the power m which is equal to a m by z minus z0 to the power m plus all the way up to a1 by z minus z0 plus summation uh, n greater than or equal to m a n z minus z 0 to the power n minus m. This is precisely what we will be getting. If you notice this, if you call it something maybe uh, h 0, h 1 everything is taken. So, let us call this as g 1 of z. Notice that g 1 of z is going to be a power series which converges. So, observe that g 1 of z is a holomorphic function on d z 0 r because it has a power series expansion there. That is good. So, here we know that a m is not equal to 0. So, the, the, the function s of z given by a m by z minus z 0 to the power m plus up to a 1 by z minus z 0 to the power 1 which is z minus z 0, this particular function is called the singular part, is called the singular part. So, this function if you notice is defined on d z 0 r minus the point z 0, this is called the singular part of f around the pole z 0. Moreover, this number m is called the order of the pole at z0 and m is called the order of the pole at z0. So, we have given a good description of how our function f behaves in a neighborhood of a pole of the function.